Welcome back guys, this is Automotive Anonymous. That's the all new refreshed Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. It's in the color that I like to call silver, although Volkswagen lists it as silver mist metallic. Anyways, it looks really good with the update and there's a lot to talk about. So we're gonna do a review of it. We're gonna do a walk around, go through the specs, initial driving impressions, zero to 60 with the GPS, and then our final thoughts to help you decide what do you do with the all-new Atlas? Do you leave it at the lot? Do you look at the other mid-size competition? Or could this maybe be the right SUV for you and your family? And big thanks to Goody Volkswagen for letting me borrow the car for the day. I'll link it below if you're interested. Otherwise, let's dive right in with this review. This refresh Atlas is actually a really good SUV and one of the best Volkswagens ever produced. Just so you know, if you're a little bit unfamiliar with its history, it started in 2018, so we're still in the first generation of the Atlas. Although for 2024, we get a lot of upgrades, a bolder look, more tech, more creature comforts, and a lot of that is standard. But what you should know as well, if you live in the United States, we get about 60 to 80,000 of these every single year. They're built in Tennessee, but it's actually a global platform as most Volkswagens are. It's a five-star crash test rated vehicle, and if you're gonna go with the lowest trim level, the SE, those start at about 37,000 before destination. If you're gonna go the second lowest trim level, which is this, the SE with technology package and a bunch of other goodies, it's about 47,000. Or if you wanna go fully loaded with an SE LR line, it's gonna be in the low 50s. So you can pick your poison. There's a lot of different variations between the five trim levels. I'm gonna overlay a few of the other updates for 2024, but some of the big ones that stood out to me is you can only get this now in the two liter turbo configuration, which you'll see under the hood soon enough. It's a little bit more powerful, a little bit more punchier, especially with Volkswagen retuning their transmission, which is an eight speed. You also have wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay, the 12 inch screen. You have heated steering wheel and ventilated seats, which are standard now. What else is standard? Ford automatic braking, lane centering, but adaptive cruise is still optional, such as four motion all wheel drive, which this one has both. For being a five seater, it's actually pretty well sized. It's about 16 and a quarter feet long, has a 10 foot wheelbase, so it's pretty well planted on the road, roughly six and a half feet wide, which is very similar to a Honda Passport, and about 5.6 feet tall. It has roughly eight inches of ground clearance, with a 360 final drive ratio that's good for putting the torque down low but also getting pretty good mpg in fact this one's rated at 19 city 26 highway it has a 19 and a half gallon tank so you and your family could be road tripping for about 500 miles between phillips if you want the last couple things to mention out here and then i'll get out of the wind because the trees are starting to dance around is when you have the tow package the 42 to 4400 pound atlas can actually tow up to 5,000 pounds so you can tow an Atlas behind an Atlas if you want. You also have a 255, 50, 20 inch wheel and tire on this configuration that looks really good with the dark accents. And then you have Volkswagen's new refresh key, which looks really good with remote start and a panic button to alert people that you need some help. Otherwise leave that puppy in your pocket because you have proximity key features to lock and unlock the vehicle. The door panel looks really good. There's a lot of contrasting materials in here, but they're all of a dark variety. You can see Volkswagen has a deal with Hobby Lobby to get some white stitching. Has a nice width armrest, a nice deep handle, all of your buttons, your controls, your speakers throughout, your hatch release, and an actual pretty big bottle and snack holder. On the door sill, a nice aluminum piece, rubberized mats and pedals. You have your hood release, you have your options, your ventilation, your lighting stock and your 10-way power adjustment heated and ventilated seats with some pretty good bolstering and more Hobby Lobby stitching. Then your eye gets led up to the ginormous panoramic moonroof. Sitting inside the Atlas Cross Sport is a really nice place to be. It's huge in here and very human-centric in design. I'm really comfortable. The armrest does a good job. All those trim pieces just follow along to the dashboard, which is ginormous at six and a half feet wide. It's almost difficult to reach over to the other side, but we're gonna fire it up with our foot on the brake pedal and our button and our finger connecting right there. It fires right up. The wheel is comfortable, fairly thick. It's heated right there with all of our voice and volume controls and our adaptive cruise controls on the left. Lighting stock back here, windshield wiper stock over here. And then here's some of that infotainment display on the center 10 inch screen. The horn sounds pretty deep, pretty decent. And then we have the 12 inch standard screen over here. I do wish 
We had physical buttons for HVAC and things like that. I wish everything wasn't tied so closely to it, but it does an okay job. There's not a ton of information you get through this screen, but it's fairly well responsive and looks pretty good. If we go into reverse, trajectory lines do move, and the backup camera quality is actually pretty decent. You can even see the trees blowing around in the background. Push park right there to get back into park. You have a wireless charger and some plugins down here. You have a couple cup holders, some extra storage, and piano black lining throughout. You have another plug-in in the armrest center console. And then you have a little bit more storage down here. So this front wheel drive platform gives you a lot of space between you and your passenger to fit stuff. What are you gonna stuff? Comment below. Otherwise you have your garage door openers, your auto dimming mirror, your compass, your LED lights and your buttons to operate the power moonroof and the electronic shade. Let's turn it off though. Let's hop in the back and see what else it has to offer. The back seat door panel follows the same theme as the front, which isn't always the case. I say that kind of jokingly, but sometimes the design, the manufacturers put more attention on the front than the rear. But in this case, it looks basically identical. In fact, you have an extra sunshade back here, which is pretty cool. Otherwise, you have a little bit of grip on the door sill in case you have to step up there to get up to roof rails, things like that. It's a 60-40 split with the 60 split on the driver's side. And those seats look really comfy, so we're gonna hop in. I'm five foot 11, sitting behind my driver position. I have a few inches of room. I have a map pocket, so I can, of course, be a backseat driver, enjoy the power moonroof, and tell them where I want to be chauffeured. Otherwise, I'll enjoy ventilation, all my phone plugged in, and my outlets right down there, as well as my center armrest with some cup holders right there, which Volkswagen did a good job. They kept them down the middle so you can still fit your arm and your cups. Otherwise, LED lighting on the roof. The liner looks really good, but it's a lot of black materials in here. Good size windows, and it's time to hop out and show you the hatch. There's four ways to access the hatch. Of course, you can climb over the back seats. You can push the button that's on the driver door panel. You can push the button that's underneath the Volkswagen logo, or you can do the laziest of all, which is what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna double click the remote on that newly redesigned remote. Come on, Atlas. You can do it. Oh, it's shy. There we go. It actually lifts pretty quietly, minus the beeping, but it does lift pretty high above the vehicle roof, so keep that in mind if you're in the garage. Otherwise, you have LED lighting on each side and a little bit of a storage spot behind the wheel well. Otherwise, back here, 40 cubic feet is what you get. If you drop the seats, you have 78, which is actually pretty outstanding for this size of vehicle. You have a privacy shade you can use, which is pretty nice. And you have a spare tire with the tools under here. When it's time to close it, push the button. It closes fairly quickly and quietly. Nothing out of the ordinary on the rear passenger side. Volkswagen didn't want to surprise anyone. You still have the same nice door panel. Map pocket for the backseat drivers and the 40 split back seat. Volkswagen takes a lot of pride in advertising and the vehicles that they produce. So as you can see here, Volkswagen, the make, cross sport the model and then you have proximity key features on the door handle but if you're gonna ride shock and you have really nice accent interior pieces just as you found on the driver's side minus some of the extra controls that you don't get unless you're the driver aluminum door sill nice leather seat kind of like a carbon fiber theme on the side manually adjusted but our backpacks having a good time you have access to the tunnel and then you have a locking glove box of adequate size I maybe wish there was a 12 volt or some plug-in in here, but honestly, it does a pretty good job and you're gonna be comfortable riding shotgun in the Atlas Sport. Let's come around to the front, pop the hood, and I'll show you what the two liter turbo looks like. Under the hood is the refreshed two liter. It makes a whopping 269 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 273 foot pound of twisty torque. That's the good stuff that you can feel, the power that you can feel while driving at 1600 RPM. All of your reservoirs are up top. Your battery is right there on the driver's side. Your air filter, the piping and the plumbing to get through the turbo, which you can easily see on the back of the engine with the exhaust manifold. And then it goes around, comes back up to the intake side. You of course have your oil fill, your alternator and your serpentine belt on the passenger side because this is a transversely mounted engine. It is all wheel drive, but it's a front wheel drive bias setup. Looks really good. There's a lot of room to work under the hood and you can see it's really sunken in into the engine bay. 
Let's drop the hood and take it for a drive. So we're gonna time travel and teleport to one of my favorite roads. We'll do our initial driving impressions and then the zero to 60, then we'll be back here for our final thoughts. Initial driving impressions of the all new Refresh Atlas Cross Sport. So honestly, feels very good. Volkswagen did a great job designing this one or redesigning it for this mid-generation refresh. Visibility is fantastic as you'd expect out of a five-seater mid-sized crossover like this. It's about 16 feet long, 4,400 pounds, and it feels really planted on the road with eight inches of ground clearance and four motion all wheel drive. You're gonna have a good time going to the ski slopes, going to the grocery store, whatever you're gonna do, the Atlas is gonna get you there. You have really good back seat room and 40 cubic feet of room behind the back seats. So you can take a lot of stuff. But if you're just driving by yourself, you're just being the driver, it's really ergonomically pleasing, easy to find a comfortable position. These seats are fairly well bolstered and they're heated and ventilated. So even our backpack's comfortable, having a good time. But if you want a little bit more, turn on the heated steering wheel and warm up your hands. Otherwise, I'm having a good time in this. It downshifts pretty quick, even when we're in eco mode, like right now. Seems to be more responsive though, the lower gears you get. And even in eco mode, the peak torque that starts at 1600 RPM honestly feels really good. The brakes in this one are phenomenal. There's not much of a, a squish to the pedal before it slows you down. You can hear motorbikes out the windows, but wind noise, which isn't too bad. You can see the trees aren't dancing around too excessively today. Cabin noise is pretty good and road noise, just getting off the highway isn't that bad either. I do wish everything wasn't controlled through the touch screen, like ventilation. I wish we had more physical buttons for stuff like that. But otherwise it's really comfortable in here. It feels very spacious at about a six and a half foot wide vehicle. And it feels really solid. The engine's very responsive and I'm sure you guys want to see how fast it is. So let's get to our private road and do a zero to 60. All right, zero to 60. I have it in sport mode. I'm going to brake rev the eight speed automatic. But keep in mind, density altitude is 6,600 feet. So even though we're turboed and that helps, we're still compressing less oxygen dense air. So we're down on power about 10%. Let's go. zero to 60 came in at 7.55 seconds given our elements it's really not that bad here's the graph and then our final thoughts my final thoughts of this atlas cross sport that's refreshed and looks more bold and more loaded for 2024 is honestly it's a really good vehicle initial impressions getting to drive it the performance of it the capability and the cargo capacity of it I'm honestly pretty impressed, especially for in the 40s. This actually at about $47,000 is the average new car. We know a lot of Americans are buying crossovers and mid-sized SUVs. We know that the average new car in 2023, 2024 costs about 48,000. So this is it. At least this is it for 60 to 80,000 people every single year. Are you gonna be one of them? Comment below. Have you owned one? Do you want one? Are you gonna test drive one? or just marvel at it, but look at the competition. I wanna know all about it. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments in the description. Like this video if you enjoyed it, if it was helpful to you in any way, that really helps the video get shared. It really helps my channel to grow. I try to post at least one to two times a week minimum, if not more, so that you have lots of stuff to watch. If you enjoy what you're watching, you're welcome to subscribe. Otherwise, I wish you the best and thank you for sticking around. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care.